Hi everyone, this is Michelle Weins from Performance High and welcome to today's Wednesday Live. Um, today we are talking about a um, very important topic. Um, well, I guess that's kind of silly, right? When do we ever not talk about an important topic? <laughs> that's kind of silly. Anyway, we're talking about warm up today. And um, this came about because I had an interesting conversation with a client uh, the other day. This, this client has been experimenting with some different ways to start out in her uh, exercise, in her training sessions. And um, we've kind of had this revelation that uh, if she starts out a little slower and a little easier, um, that she actually has better performance as she goes through her workout. And so we got to talking yesterday about why that is and um, some different things about, you know, what happens to the body when you, you know, start exercising and, or go out on your training session. That's what I mean. Um, so I got to thinking, oh, what a great topic, warm up. That's, it's, it's exactly what this is, is warm up. And uh, I mean, I know the frustration, believe me. I mean, I, somewhat resist the concept of warming up myself. I mean, when I want to go for a run, I just want to go for my run. I don't want to have to go through this big long sequence of stuff to like get ready to go. I just want to go. Same thing with, you know, biking, same thing with swimming. It's like if when I'm ready, when the, when the moment strikes me and I'm ready to do it and I'm in the mood and I'm, <laughs> and I'm ready to get that workout started, is warm up sort of feels like this thing that you just have to that you kind of, that you don't want to do because it seems like it's taking away from the workout. Um, and then you know here's the other thing too. It's like okay, so if you're a multi sport athlete, you're swimming, you're biking, and you're running. Um, do you? I mean, my client asked me this. She said, "Do if I if I'm coming from swim and I'm going to my bike because you know her training sessions she has to do multiple things." Um, she said, if I'm biking and then I want, I'm going to go to a run, do I have to warm the run up? And I said, yes, actually you do. So that's what we're going to talk about today. We're going to talk about warm up. We're going to talk about why it's beneficial and why it will help you with your performance. Um, and this is what my client is experiencing. She's, she's starting to get this concept and get really, um, she's buying into this concept that if she starts out a little slower and actually gives her body a little more grace in the beginning of the workout, that the rest of the workout's going to go significantly better. And her times are better. She's been seeing this. Um, she's been able to negative split, which is a, another concept, but it's this idea that you go faster in the second half than you do in the first half. Um, and if you don't do a great warm up, that's actually pretty close to impossible to do. So, um, anyway, things have been working really well for her and I thought, you know what, let's talk about warm up a little bit. I've talked about it before, but it's worth talking about it again, especially in this context of multi-sport. So warm up, um, is simply the process of getting the body ready to do something. And the rule of thumb that we typically go by is the, um, the, the more intense, um, the shorter the distance, the more intense, the more you want to be like at pace or on pace at this point, um, the more warm up is needed. So if you're getting ready to do a 5k versus a marathon, you're going to have more warm up time for the 5k. Your body just needs more time to get uh, ready to go. Um, higher speeds, higher intensity require that additional time. Um, and you know, that warm up just, it, it's just, uh, more of a process. The, so the longer, the, the slower you're going to go really the less kind of warm up you need, but there still should be some. Here's the other thing too, as we age, um, we need more warm up time. And I've been noticing this with my own workouts that, um, okay, just take weight training. For example, I, I go to the weight room for roughly an hour. Um, and you know, when I was in my twenties, I would just walk in the door and I would start lifting. I mean, maybe, maybe I had like, you know, one warm up set or something like that. And then I would head into full weights and get the workout going and it would be an hour workout. Now, um, I still have an hour workout, but the first half of that, <laughs> and it's gotten longer <laughs> over the years. <laughs> so it didn't start out at a half an hour, but now it is definitely a half an hour. 
Um, you know, I'm in my 50s. Um, and so more warm up time is needed. I spend roughly, you know, 30 minutes of my hour weight workout getting ready to lift. <laughs> Um, so by the time I hit the gym at, you know, 30 minutes in, I'm ready to go. I'm ready to, to do good weights. I'm ready to, you know, get in there, be intense, get out. Um, I have to say that my workouts have gotten a lot more efficient. I spend a lot less time dinking around and a lot more time just, you know, on the particular lift and getting it done. Same thing with my, um, cardio workouts. Um, that warm up time is just, it's, it's needed as we age. I, we just need to be more gentle to our bodies, more forgiving for our bodies to give them a chance to, to get going. So, um, that warm up time definitely gets longer as you get older. And conversely, the workout time, um, ideally should actually, you know, get more and more efficient. Um, it can get shorter and get more efficient, um, more in, more intense and more efficient. Um, so, you know, just some things to think about. Warm-ups include a bunch of different things. They include a little bit of light cardio. Um, that could be walking, that could be very light jogs, that could be walk and jog, um, you know, that kind of stuff to get your heart rate up. And then it, it really ideally should include things that are mobility-based. So, um, you know, warm-up is not the time to sit on the ground and stretch your hamstrings um, or stand in one place and stretch your quads. That you do later if you want to do that. But warm-up is really for mobility exercises, those things where you're moving through ranges of motion, you're asking your body to coordinate movement patterns together. Um, you know, we, we very rarely do any kind of, you know, athletic stuff, uh, you know, sitting in a chair, stretching a hamstring, right? I mean, that's just not the way it goes. So we wanna try and mimic the movements of our sports as best we can. We wanna work on the areas that we know we're tight for pretty much Everybody across the board, I would say that's, you know, sh that's shoulders back, chest open, thoracic spine being mobile, hips being mobile. Um, so, you know, upper back, hips, that kind of stuff is great to work on in warm-ups with those mobility exercises. And I've done tons of stuff on mobility. So there's, you know, lots of information out there on that. Um, but that's the kind of stuff that you want to include. And, uh, you know, that just kind of gets your body, you know, it can include light weights. That's fine. Like I use med balls, um, you know, the med balls, the weighted balls, I use those in my uh, mobility exercises. I do all kinds of squats, which is just body weight squats, lunges, that kind of stuff is in my mobility, uh, section for my warmups, um, and various other, you know, kind of stuff. So, um, that's not really today's talk, but um, that's generally what warm-ups should include. So to the topic, which is what's the point? Well, the point is, is that you're, again, trying to get your body ready to go. And here's the, the key thing. This is what my athlete and I were talking about the other day, is that if you just, you know, hit the ground running, so to speak, let's just use running for an example, because that's the, you know, the little expression I used. If you hit the ground running, um, and you haven't really done much of a warm up, your body goes, oh my gosh, like what the heck? And so, you know, the systems aren't ready to go. Um, and so essentially what happens is your heart rate goes higher than it needs to be. And here's the thing to remember folks, and this is, this is what my athlete is starting to um, really understand, is that, you know, your energy levels are um, finite, meaning that we only have, I think of it like a book of matches. I think this is a really great example. You have a book of matches, it's got 10 matches in it. And if you don't warm up and you, you know, try to hit your pace right off the bat, you might be able to do that. You might be just, you might think it's, oh, just fine. But guess what? Because you didn't allow that, that warm up time in there, your heart rate is going to be significantly higher at that pace than it really needs to be. And so guess what? You're burning matches like crazy. Okay, so those energy matches are just going out the door. If you think about that in terms of a long exercise um, time frame, like if you're doing a, uh, if you're training for a marathon or you're training for a half Ironman and your workouts are longer, um, then essentially you're burning matches unnecessarily. I mean, we don't need to do that. If you start out slower and you preserve your matches, so you just kind of ease into it and let the body kind of gradually come into it. And then when it's warmed up and ready to handle the load you're going to give it, 
you know, then you hit your pace and guess what? Instead of burning, you know, five matches all at once because your heart rate was super high in the beginning, now you're only burning two. Um, and because we can't replace the matches at a one-to-one -one ratio when we're exercising, so the calories that you expend when you're exercising, even if you eat perfectly while you're exercising, you can't put them back at a one-to-one -one ratio. Your stomach and your intestines just won't allow it. So we're always in, an, in a deficit when we're exercising. Even though you're fueling perfectly, you're in a deficit. And it's just a matter of how big you want that deficit to be. So what this athlete has been experiencing is that if she starts out a little slower and she does, she's actually working with a um, two minutes, roughly two minute to one minute walk to run to walk ratio. So she starts walking for two, or running for two minutes, very like light and gentle. And then she walks for one and she repeats that cycle like five times. And then she feels like, oh my gosh, you know, that's, that's roughly like 10 minutes. So then she goes to, is that right? Five times a three, oh, 15 minutes. Sorry, I need to do my math. So then she goes to a, a three minutes on run with one minute walk. And she does that for a couple cycles. So that's like, you know, kind of the next step. And then, you know, roughly 15, 20, 30 minutes in, now she feels like she's ready to go. So then she goes into her four minute, one minute. Four minutes run, one minute walk. And lo and behold, her times have been awesome. She's been negative splitting. So her miles, each consecutive mile is getting progressively faster um, at a four to one ratio. Uh, and she feels so much better. So it's that idea of starting slower, giving your body some grace, giving it some time so that you can then go faster later on down the line. Um, so the question came up and I'll come, I mentioned it, but I'll come back to it now is if you're doing multi-sport and you're doing one sport to the next, do you give that next sport warm up time? And the answer is yes. So think about biking to running. Okay. That's a really good example. So on a bike, you're bent over. So, you know, your back is typically rounded. Your shoulders are hunched over. If you're in arrow position, you're really closed in on your chest. Your neck is kinked up like this because you're looking ahead. Um, so your spine is all like twisted and weird and, you know, kinked up and your hips are tight because you're, you know, really closed down on your, on your arrow position. Um, it's leg dominant, right? So the upper body is not doing terribly much. And then guess what? You're going to go to vertical. You're going to ask your hips to totally open up. You're going to ask your upper body to straighten up. You're going to get your spine straight. Your head's going to come down. And then you're going to ask your arms to start moving and actually contributing to the, to the propulsion power. So we go from leg dominant bent over to vertical and whole body dominant. Um, absolutely, you need a warm up. Even though you have, your, have had your cardio up, right? Your cardiovascular system is move is all like, you know, primed and you've been biking. It's all cool. Everything's working really well. By the time you transition into that run, uh, now you've got to ask, you're going to ask that body to do some, a completely different thing here. Muscles that have not been worked are going to now start to activate. Um, positions are completely different. Now you're weight bearing where you were not on the bike. So yeah, give yourself that warm up time. Take a little bit of time to just be nice and relaxed, get into it nice and easy, and um, you know, and, and your run will be significantly better. Same thing from swim to bike. In swimming, we're horizontal, we're in cold water, um, we're looking straight down. Uh, it was primarily arm dominant. If we wanna talk about which muscle groups are doing a ton of work, most, most people in open water with wetsuits are not really using their legs. And then we get onto the bike, and now we're gonna go leg dominant. We're gonna go hunched over versus straight body position that we were in in the water. So absolutely, give your body time to just go through those, those little warm up processes. Kind of develop a sequence of things that you do and that becomes the thing that you do. Um, it can be you know any kind of combination of stuff, but um, it's helpful if you can kind of put it into a little package and say, this is my warm up. Um, I find it mentally helpful because then I'm not thinking workout. Um, I have a sequence that I do when I get into the pool. I have a sequence that I do when I go run. I'm not as good when I get on the bike, which is my Achilles heel. I'm trying to get better at that. 
Um, so I'm working on this too. But have a sequence of things that you do, and then that becomes your warm up. It's not your workout, it's your warm up. And then when that's done, then you shift your head over to, okay, now we work out. Um, so anyway, I hope that helps guys, um, at least give you something to think about. If you have questions about this, I'm happy to answer questions, you know, put the comments in the, in the, um, comment section below, put your questions down below. I'd love to have this conversation with anybody who's, um, kind of trying some different stuff out and experimenting to see what you think, um, and what you found that works really well for you. Um, please hit the like button if you found this helpful and share it with anyone who you think might benefit and I will see you next week, Wednesday at one for another live. Thanks so much and have a great day all.